Hi everyone, I know this is a pretty unconventional video. No gimmicks, no props, no multiple characters. I just, I wrote a po post yesterday and a lot of people have been reaching out to me about it. And, and I want to clarify and make sure it's very focused and direct. And it goes as follows. Many people, in fact, most students who are looking for careers in finance target the jobs that pay the most money. This is just across the board and it's logical. Why are you going to school? Nobody goes to school for a college degree, certainly not finance, because you want to change the world. That's a bunch of bogus. You go to school because you want to make money. So naturally, you want to target the jobs that make the most money. However, you have to think of expected value. It's a concept in math where you take the amount and the probability of it occurring, you put them together, and you get that expected value of your application, so to speak. So in other words, let's say you have a job paying a million dollars and you have a 1% probability of actually landing that job. You have to think about that job as not being worth a million dollars, but being worth $10,000 to you. And if you think about the job application that way, you'll start realizing that some of the less attractive jobs, I say less attractive, they're really good jobs that pay decently, but not wildly actually have much more value for you. So for example, instead of looking at investment banking, you focus on a job in prime brokerage or in reporting, where instead of your starting total comp being 180, your total comp will be 120. But with your internships and your skills, you feel confident that you have a solid 80% chance of landing that role. You're expected value for that role is way higher than investment banking. That's the way I always looked at my own career. It's much smarter because if you put all your eggs in that one banking basket or even two, you choose, you know, all right, I'm going to look at uh, this type of banking role and, and private equity or like two roles that are so massively competitive and you require your sponsorship and you don't have relevant internships. Like you put all that against you. It's, it's a real uphill battle and you're basically going to have a 1% chance of success with major payout. But what if it fails? You studied only for that. Your resume is tailored only for that. And then you're going to throw up your hands and say, oh, well, I might as well try for everything else. Yeah, but those probabilities for everything else went down significantly because all the people that were tailoring for those roles already applied, got offers, and now you have a lower chance for anything else. I don't like pushing people down like I have kids. I'm always trying to motivate them, but push them down at the same time because you have to be realistic, but also be hopeful. So I really like telling people, look, there are multiple ways to go about it. If your goal is to become fabulously wealthy, think about what skills you have, what gets you excited, what you've been successful with in your past, even in high school or college. What has been the success that drive you? What makes people around you smile when they realize working with you is going to be a success. You take those things and you try to get that entry level role, internships, whatever it is, focused around what makes you shine. And then you can take your career in different directions later on. I'm not saying you'll end up in investment banking or in PE. Probably not. But that's okay because you can still land in positions and in ways that make you a ton of money. Using myself as an example, and, and I've mentioned this a few times, it's on a LinkedIn video, I started my career in a role that not a single person in my master's program would have accepted. It was not a very attractive role. The bonus year end was less than $3,000 at Morgan Stanley. That sounds crazy, right? But it didn't take long for me to network, strategize, and move into a position that anyone in my college class would have killed to get. And, and I got that through strategy and planning and just being smarter. Had I applied for that role straight out of college, I would have had almost no chance in getting it. I would not have been successful. So if you are not a Harvard 4.0 GPA, relevant experience, like all of those perfect stars lining up, if you're not that candidate, I'm not saying don't apply, but I'm saying don't target your entire application. Don't have one resume for banking. Don't have one strategy and be focusing on this one tactic. Instead, Put most of your eggs in a different basket where you have a better chance of success and you can have a relatively successful finance career. And then after you do that or while you're doing that, you can start planning the next steps in your career. And yes, be very successful in that as well. I know this is a different type of video. It's not very different. Uh, it's not very 
you know, similar to my other ones where I'm kind of jumping around and being being silly. But it's just it's a serious talk we need to have, especially now when we're coming very close to internship time. I know a lot of people still don't have their internships, but they're still being stubborn about how they're applying. And I'm just like begging you, please be a little more realistic. But you can be hopeful about your future, even if you didn't get exactly what you were dreaming for this summer. If you have any other questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. Please just leave a comment down below. I will do my best to get back to you uh, within a relatively short amount of time. Or if you have any stories that, you know, prove me wrong, go ahead. I'd love to hear it. All right. I'll see you guys next week.